We classify acids and bases as strong or weak based on the fraction that has changed to go to the product side. So a strong acid like hydrochloric acid will fully deprotonate. Every one of these HCLs will end up as a Cl minus and the H plus will go join the water to form the hydronium ion. Fully deprotonated, one way trip. See, this is a one way arrow. A weak acid forms an equilibrium. And we can say that it is partially deprotonated. Not all of these go over here because it's an equilibrium. But some of them, the H plus will leave, giving you a CN minus. The H plus will add to the water and form the hydronium ion. But only some of them, not all of them. And how does this look when you talk about bases? Well, here is a strong base, an oxide ion. It will take one of the H's from the water to form OH minus. It will be fully protonated. It's going to do this one way trip and you will just have OH minuses as a result. A weak base will get into an equilibrium. It'll be partially protonated. So not every ammonia will do this, but some of the ammonia will pick up an H plus and become ammonium ions leaving an OH minus behind. So if you have a strong acid, your equilibrium is going to be way over to the right. Ka is greater than one. That means you have more products. These numbers are higher than the HA is. A lot of the HA fell apart. So a strong acid, it's well to the right. I have listed common strong acids here. Most people will tell you there are seven strong acids. You will notice this list has six items in it. Depending on whether you're making your definition based on Arrhenius or Bronsted-Lowry, or you go over to the organic, you will hear people claim that the seventh one is a different acid. These though, these six, everybody agrees on. So that's why I'm telling you about them and just warning you that everybody says there's seven, but number seven, it's a big debate. If you think about it, the first three are all with the halogens. So they're in that column. You will notice HF, hydrofluoric acid, is not in this list, but hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiotic are here. Then you have perchloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. So on these strong acids, these are the reactions for those six. And you'll notice every one of them is a one-way trip. This is not an equilibrium. It's going to react in water. So here's the hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiotic. All of them do the same thing. They lose an H to the water, forming hydronium ions, and they're left with the chloride, the bromide, the iodide, as the conjugate base of the acid. Now perchloric, they're starting to try to show you what it looks like. It's kind of difficult in three dimensions on a flat surface, but you can see the chlorines in the center and there's oxygens attached to it. And then the hydrogen is attached to one of the oxygens. At any rate, what happens is it's gonna lose that hydrogen forming your perchlorate ion. But again, we find that we have developed hydronium ions as the conjugate acid. Sulfuric acid, so the sulfur's in the center, the oxygens are all attached to it. The hydrogens are attached to two different oxygens. And when it dissociating, we don't talk about both of the hydrogens coming off. We just talk about one of them coming off. So hydrogen sulfate is the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. And here is nitric acid, nitrogen in the center, oxygen is attached to it, and then again, hydrogen is attached to an oxygen. So when that hydrogen comes off, it leaves a nitrate ion. So once again, strong acids will have a high Ka and a low pKa.